Hi, this is Pastor David. Welcome to Grace for the Journey. My prayer is that you will receive an encouragement, direction, and maybe a challenge from the scriptures today. I hope that you'll be blessed. Thanks so much for joining in. Joy to the world, the Lord is come, let earth receive her king. So often that hymn is sung at Christmas time, but yet it's appropriate any time of the year. Today we begin our scripture reading in Luke chapter 2 and verses 8 through 11, the account of the shepherds hearing the announcement of the Savior's birth. Luke chapter 2 and verse 8, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. Can you imagine being out on a starlit night, away from any any light sources other than the stars and possibly the moon? And here the shepherds were in that deep and dark night, and then suddenly they experienced the light of God's presence as the angels appeared. Israel knew the light of God's presence in the the time of the Exodus. They were guided by a pillar of light, pillar of fire at night, and a cloud during the day. But yet, of course, this surprise coming to them at night to these shepherds, it would have been terrifying, and I'm sure we would have been terrified as well. Later, a few would experience the the transfiguration as, as Christ shone with a glorious Shekinah glory, uh, the light of the of the Lord, but yet we we see that this light was to bring a comfort. It was not to be feared. It was indeed the light of God's presence that was coming to these shepherds. Later, Jesus would even say, "Let your light shine in dark places. Let your light shine in the world. A reflection of me, as I shine in you, you will reflect my light, my presence to the world. So quickly in verse 10, the angel says to them, do not be afraid. One of the fear nots of scripture, don't be afraid. This is God at work. And then they continued, I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. The news that I have is not just news for you, not just joy for you, but joy for all people, for you for others and for all of mankind all of mankind alive at this time on this on this earth but also all that will follow you the generations that will follow you forever this is great news great joy for all people the world then needed joy they needed that excitement they needed that encouragement and today our world needs joy with so many things on with with COVID, with famine, unrest in so many places, the world needs joy. So many individuals, nations, the world truly is in crisis. Many people are having a personal crisis, and now is that time of hearing and knowing and experiencing the joy that that angel came and shared with the shepherds. Verse 11 Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. The one that Israel had looked for, the one that you have looked for, the one that you have watched for, a Savior. Not just a general Savior for the world, but a Savior for you individually. For you as shepherds, for you as a community, for this nation of Israel, and for all of the world. A Savior has been born. The Messiah The anointed one that Israel waited for is born today, the Savior. The Savior who would bear the penalty of sin. He would conquer the power of sin, conquer the power of death, and would produce joy in their lives and our lives today. The Savior is born. Faith replacing fear. In Luke 4, Verses 16 through 19, Jesus came into Nazareth, where he'd been brought up, and as was his custom, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, and he began to read. 
The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he began to say to them, Today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. How amazing that the Savior, the Messiah, walked into that synagogue that day and quoted from Isaiah. And then said today, this is fulfilled. The one you have waited for, the Messiah you have waited for, is here and has fulfilled these very words. Jesus later would tell his disciples that I have come that you might have joy and that your joy might be full. Later in this chapter of Luke, in verse 40, it says that they brought many who had various sicknesses and he healed them all. In verse 41, they brought those who had demons, and the demons even proclaimed, you are the Son of God. And he set those people who were bound by these demons, he set each one of them free, fulfilling what he had just spoken in the synagogue. In chapter 5 of Luke, and verse 13, a leper came, and, and he was cleansed immediately, and the news of Jesus spread through the whole region. In verse 25, there was a paralytic that came and was healed and went away with joy in his heart, praising God as he went. He was healed both body and soul. Verse 27 of chapter 5 of Luke. Here was the tax collector Levi who followed Jesus. So here we have the very fulfillment. Just a short time later, they were hearing the good news, receiving the good news, and they were being set free. The poor came to life, the richness of life in the Lord Jesus Christ, the captives, captives that were oppressed by demons, captives of their own sin and circumstances, they were set free. Blind eyes were opened spiritually and physically. The oppressed were set free. Jesus, setting each one of them free, the Spirit of the Lord is on me. He has anointed me to proclaim good news, to proclaim liberty, the recovering of sight, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Hallelujah. He came to fulfill the law and the prophets. He came to bring hope, hope in the faithfulness of God's word, hope in the faithfulness of God's promises, that they are fulfilled. And as he said today, these words are fulfilled. This prophecy is fulfilled. And every word of God is fulfilled in our lives as we receive them, as we walk in his will. The joy of his work is upon us. The poor in spirit, captive set free, the blind recovering of sight, so many times we say, how could I have been so blind to have missed something, to have missed an opportunity, to have missed a sign of something? Well, similarly, how could we have been so blind so long as to reject the Lord Jesus Christ? Philippians 4 and verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. The place where I am always, the circumstances I'm in, whatever is going on in my life, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. On the journey, wherever we are, wherever we are in our work life and our study life, whether we're in the air, on the boat, in a car, wherever we are, rejoice in the Lord always. At home, and whether that's a palace or a shack, rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice in the Lord in strength. Rejoice in the Lord in weakness. Rejoice in the Lord in what seem to be fair circumstances and unfair circumstances. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice when the situation seems just. Rejoice even when it is unjust. Whether at home, at work, at school, in the community, wherever we are, rejoice in the Lord always. In First Thessalonians, 
verses 5 and through 16 through 24. We see this in, in enthusiastic, excited approach to life. And that should be our attitude and our disposition in life as well. He begins, rejoice always in verse 16. And then quickly pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So often we're looking, finding the will of God. Well, here the apostle gives three quick, easy steps to finding and fulfilling the word of God and the will of God in your life. Rejoice, pray, and give thanks. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing every morning, every day, through the day, and at night. Pray without ceasing. And by praying without ceasing, you will overcome the temptation and discouragements of the devil. And you will receive those blessings. And give thanks in all circumstances. Count your blessings. Recognize the blessing of God in your life. Give thanks in every circumstance. And again, again the, good, the good and the bad, the ugly. Whatever the circumstances, give thanks. Thanks to God for his unspeakable gift. Thanks to God for, for his victory. He causes us to triumph. He causes you to triumph in everything. Give thanks. So there, going back again, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. This is his will. He continues on and gives some, some good advice again. Do not quench the spirit. Don't despise the prophecies. Test everything and hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit and soul and body be blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. Stay away from the evil. Stay away from the negative. Hold fast to what is good. That's where you need to put your, put your attention, to put your mind. Test everything and hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Because he that calls you is faithful and he will surely do it. You can trust him. He will sanctify you. He will keep you. He will watch over you. God will get the job done. And that is his job. To sanctify you. To keep you until he comes again. What he has done. What he is doing what he has promised to do in his word, in scripture, he will do it. He calls you and he is faithful and he will do it. He will keep you. So again, we need to trust God to get that job done. He knows what he's doing. He has formed us and he informs us through the word, through the scriptures. And just as that message came to the shepherds on those dark hillsides, I have a message of joy. Jesus stood in the synagogue and said, Today, these words, these prophecies, this sure word of God is fulfilled in your life. And today, every word of God is fulfilled in your hearing as you have received, accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. Joy to the world. The Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. We need to receive that king into our lives and let him reign. And he who is faithful will surely do it. First Peter 1 Peter 1.8, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than that of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire. There is a refining fire that tries us. We don't like it. We don't like the trials. We don't like the temptation. We don't like the tests that face us. They're tough. Sometimes we're tried in those practical things of, of finances, of resources. So many times in health, facing health crisis, relationships, at work, at school, in our daily lives, so many trials and so many times it does feel like we're being tried by fire. 
Sometimes even the treatments feel like a burning. It feels like fire itself. But the encouragement there is that we might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. There is a victory to come. And in the midst of trials, in the midst of the temptation, in the midst of those, those fires, yet still we have that joy of, of the Lord. That joy of the Lord that is our strength. And we remind ourselves to rejoice always. And again, we tell ourselves, and, and so many times in the trial, we do need to remind ourselves to rejoice. Put your hope in God. In verse 8 of 1 Peter 1, Whom having not seen, ye love. You have not seen the Savior, except in his word. You have not seen him face to face, but you love him. You trust him, in whom now you have not seen him, but yet you believe. You believe him. You believe the words that were spoken to those shepherds. You believe the words that Jesus spoke as he lifted up that scroll of the prophet Isaiah. I have come and I have fulfilled these words even in your hearing. You rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. 1 Peter 1.8. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. You have victory in Christ every day. You have not seen him, but you love him, and he loves you. You have believed in him, and you have trusted him, and just as he walked this earth, and he brought healing, and he brought sight, and he brought transformation, he brought liberty to the lives of many. He brings liberty and transformation to you today. Rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Hallelujah. You have not seen him, but you love him, and he loves you. You have believed on him. You have trusted his word that never changes, that is always faithful that Jesus himself came to fulfill what he promised for centuries. He came to fulfill and he continues to fulfill in your life and in my life. If you will love him, if you will believe in him, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. That was the good news, good news of joy for all people. That's what the angels spoke to those shepherds. That's what the shepherds went broadcasting around the hillsides, around the town of Bethlehem. Good news, great joy for all people, for all times, for all generations, for all cultures. Good news, great joy. And Peter wraps it up so well. You rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Just as we looked at that verse some time ago, we give thanks to God for his unspeakable gift, his unspeakable gift of love in the Lord Jesus Christ, for God so loved the world. And that gift brings unspeakable joy. And we thank God for joy unspeakable and full of glory this season. Good news for all people, especially you. Good news for all people. Spread that good news with everyone you meet this next week and in the weeks, the months, and the years to come. And now, may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you, each one and go in that joy unspeakable and full of glory. Thanks so much for listening today. If you have a question or a prayer request, please email me. Let's be in touch. My prayer for you today is that God would bless you and give you grace for the journey.